Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my book reviews on a literary journey, a magical realism. Now, for those of you that may not know, magical realism is technically a subgenre. I this is a new um, type of reading for me. I you know I've definitely read books that are considered magical realism in the past, but hadn't really paid attention to that categorization and what it meant. So I did some reading, and what I thought was really interesting is that. The key component to it is that magic is embedded in the fiction read, but in a way that it's just a natural part of that world. So it's not something where you are like, oh, that person is using magic. <laughs> and it, it's just an interesting kind of hybrid between fantasy and fiction to me. And um, I'm, I think I'm really enjoying it. So as I go through the three books that I've read as part of this literary journey, I would definitely say if you guys have other recommendations for me around magical realism, I would love to have them because I'm going to start to put some more of these books on my radar. Okay, the way my book reviews work, for those of you that are not familiar, I give every book one to five stars. One star are books I just did not like. Probably didn't even finish reading them. Two stars, eh, the book was okay. Three stars, good book. I liked the book and I would recommend it to some people. Four stars, great book. I love the book. I would definitely recommend it to a lot of people. And then five stars are those books that just blow my mind. That was my personal sound effect. It's one of those days. Um, and I just, I do want everyone to read them so we can talk about them because they were so incredibly good. I will, as always, have links below to the books if you are interested in purchasing any of them. Now, let's get started. I'm going to go from lowest, as always, to the highest. This was a weird low score for me. I'm going to say, guys, I wanted to love this book. I was so intrigued, and the writing was good, and I ended up I gave this book two stars, and honestly, guys, I didn't even finish reading it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what this book is about and why I struggle. So Gold Diggers, um, this is a debut novel by the author. And you guys, her writing was was good. Like, her use of language was good. Um, so I feel so bad not having enjoyed this book. Really interesting concept, too. Like, I was so intrigued by the plot. Essentially, we have an Indian-American um, our main character, the narrator, is a male. Um, he is very good friends and has feelings toward a female friend of um, his who we are also going to get to know. And it was really interesting because the author originally planned to write from the female's point of view um, and found that the male was really the one um, that she was most, I think, drawn to, if I remember correctly. And I think she did a really good job of narrating um, from his point of view. Essentially, um, the magical element is that there is a drink that his female friend, the one he has feelings for, and her mom make, leveraging gold from a person. So if somebody, and I guess gold, and this was an interesting thing to learn about in the Indian culture, gold has a lot of meaning, it has a very high value. And there is a history of people that, that steal gold from um, other, you know, I obviously in every culture people steal gold, but there it's got a different meaning in the Indian culture because of a lot of the um, values that are embedded in it. It is a very, very important um, piece of material, a lot of sentimental value, a lot of spiritual value. And so what's interesting is that um, the female in this book and her mom use gold in a drink um, that makes like a gold elixir. And if you drink it, you then embody um, the characteristics of the person that wore it. So our main character, he is struggling with motivation. And one of the dynamics that's explored in the book is just the culture around the Indian American parenting and pushing their children for success. And the children in also being driven for success, but how in, with some of them, this creates a lot of tension, depression, um, just the amount of mental energy it takes to always be driven like that to succeed. And the author explores this. All things I thought were, were in and of themselves so interesting. 
what is going to happen is that our main character in particular, he is just struggling. He is not driven at all. So he really gets caught up. He discovers this um, drink and he really gets caught up in taking gold from one person in particular and using it um, in his beverages to get give himself, keep himself going. Um, but this ends up setting off a chain of events that lead to a not so great outcome. Again, totally thought this was all fascinating. I could not get into the book. <laughs> I, I did not really, it wasn't that I dis, I just, I disliked the characters, but I didn't have feelings. I don't know. I just didn't connect with the characters with a strong feeling at all. There wasn't like, I hate this character, which is a strong feeling, right? And you can just be caught up in it. Or I love this character, or I find this character entertaining. There was something about just the experience as I was reading that I felt disconnected from it the whole time. And I kept having to push myself and push myself to keep reading, just keep going, just keep going. And halfway into the book, I'm like, I I just, I, it was slowing me down. Like I kept having to reread pages and it, I, I finally just stopped. Now, normally for me, I will one star a book for me, you know, that I did not finish reading. But in this case, I struggled with that because I really thought that the writer's writing, it, her use of language was was really good. Um, so I ended up going with two stars, just a meh read for me. But I do think there are people out there that might love this book. And I would so want to hear if any of you read this book or have read this book, what you thought. Because I, I'm just, this is one of those when I get to it that I'm like, I... I'm so, like, I wanted, I wanted so much to love, or at least like the book. And I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't. So that was it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would love, I, I would, like, want to find other people that read the book. There was a book like this that, um, I can't even remember the name right now, that same, similar experience. I've had a few that I really just struggle with, and I get so curious what other people think. All right, now we're going to jump into a four-star read. Now, this one, I love this book. This one, I, um, Natasha Pulley, The Kingdoms, this one blew my mind. I, I'm going to tell you guys, if you are a fan of magical realism, if you're a fan of fantasy, or you're a fan of historical fiction, put this book on your radar. But for those of you that are like me, you are going to need to take notes because this book does get a little confusing because there is a play on time. Um, it is set in the UK as well as Scotland, if I remember correctly. We are going to be at a few different points in time, as I said. We're going to jump between the early or late 1800s and into the 1900s, about 100 years difference back and forth. And what happens is um, it is an alternative history element. So our main character is a man who all of a sudden has amnesia. He steps off a train into his homeland I think it's in London and realizes he has no memory of, he knows who he is, but he has no memory of like a minute ago. And he has one concept of a woman's name named Madeline. Like he is really drawn. He thinks Madeline could be his wife. And he essentially gets taken to a mental health um, like a hospital, and then his owner comes to claim him, which is interesting because in this particular case, London is ruled by the French. Fr the French won the war, and they have enslaved the English. English is forbidden, and it's so fascinating because the English that are enslaved are freed around the age of 32 or 35, which he is as we're reading the book, but they still are discriminated against heavily. Um, and it's just so, it's just such a fascinating world. Um, so as you're reading this, you know, he, he goes back to his new home. He meets his master who's very kind to him. And there seems to be a bond there. And he's he finds out that he's married to this woman that was um, he, not Madeline, not the woman he thought. And he basically settles into this new life. And then he receives a postcard that was sent to him and signed by someone with the initial M. And he thinks this is Madeline. And the card, and this is so cool because this particular book subscription 
that I got. <laughs> and I lost the card. I don't know where the postcard is. I used it as a bookmark. Unbelievable. So the postcard says, um, if come home, if you remember, come home soon. But the postcard is of a lighthouse in Scotland. And the postcard has been held by the post office on request for like 98 or 100 years. So someone 100 years ago wrote a postcard to him telling him to come home. And he's just, this just triggers something for him. And he essentially goes, he finds a way to go to the lighthouse and explore. And this is where we're going to get into um, the time element of what's going on here. It is so good, guys. I loved this book. But I'm telling you right now, just get ready with some notes. The plot is complex. You're just going to have to track a little bit back and forth, but it is so worth it. Um, such a beautiful read. Such an absolutely beautiful read. And I'm going to have to find my postcard. All right. So then the last book that was part of this magical realism is a book I have been hearing everyone rave about. And I get it. I know why. Because this was a five-star read for me. And that was The Midnight Library. Right? <laughs> Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So I actually was not a huge fan of How to Stop Time. I, I, I think I liked it. It may have been a three-star read for me, so I shouldn't say not a huge fan. I just didn't love it. Um, this book immediately fell in love with his writing, fell in love with the story. So what this book is about is our main character, essentially. Everything is just not going well in her life. Uh, she feels that she adds no value to the world, that people don't need her she you know there's nobody that depends on her she's not bringing anything to her life into the world and she decides to just take her own life and and through the course of doing that she her consciousness comes to in the midnight library and this is a setting where there are a book for every alternative decision she could have made and I love this concept. I always find this quantum physics element of alternative universes and um, every moment, you know, there's there's a split. If you had done this instead of this, um, the, all these bec become alternative paths and realities. So what she is afforded the opportunity to do is to explore all the different outcomes that could have happened because she lives a life full of regret. She literally regrets so much. And there is so much in her own personal life and decision she she almost seemed afraid of success i because i don't want to spoil anything but she held herself back from so many things that would have brought her happiness um so literally the book is going to be this sort of psychological spiritual exploration of um you know fulfillment and uh just a sense of achievement i'm trying to think like when you get if anyone knows those erickson's journey phases and you when you're at your elder years and you look back it's like self-actualization or feeling like i lived a life well versus despair i think it is and she, even though she's younger than that phase i would say she's definitely at that despair point and this is sort of like she has the opportunity to feel more feel more at peace with her life and with herself and perhaps achieve all the happiness she she wasn't up until this point loved this book absolutely loved this book i think everyone this is five star like everyone everyone should read it i think it was such a fun read and i so love books that play on you know they they seem so simple on the surface but as you're reading it, you're sitting there going, wow, this is there's actually a lot packed in here. And I feel like the author did that beautifully. Um, absolutely loved, loved, loved his writing and loved the plot, loved the characters. Everything about that book was mind blowing for me. So that was it. Overall, I consider this a really great literary journey on magical realism. And as I said in the beginning, pop some um, thoughts below if you guys have read a, a book on um, magical realism that really blew your mind. I would love to dabble more in this subgenre. So that is it. Thank you as always for watching. And um, now let's go read some books. Happy reading.